You can perform thermal analysis using either standalone ice pack, ice pack with an ANSYS workbench, or ice pack with an ANSYS electronics desktop. In this video, we're concerned with the translation flow from a Cadence SBB tool to ANSYS ice pack with an electronics desktop using IPC 2581. Some of the formats used in the electronics industry to exchange PCB manufacturing data include Gerber, ODB++, and IPC 2581. To translate a board or package layout from a Cadence tool such as APD, SIP, or Allegro to ANSYS IcePack, the best format is IPC 2581, specifically Revision B. You can use ODB++ version 8, but it requires additional work for the user. Gerber works well for creating 3D CAD geometry for use in HFSS, Q3D Extractor, and Maxwell, but it doesn't convey all of the electrical and material information that the other formats provide. IPC 2581 is a widely used open file format for transferring PCB manufacturing data. In addition to geometry, it preserves the layer stackup, components, materials, and other information critical for electrical analysis. As an example, here is an SODIM memory module layout created in Cadence. When you open the layout in Allegro, APD, or SIP, use the IPC 2581 data transfer capability in those products to export the design to a file. This operation invokes an export dialog box. In the export dialog, use the following options for successful import to ANSYS products. Use IPC 2581 revision B. Set the functional mode to user def. Accept the default settings. All the checkboxes should be active except for the one to export cross-section data only. In ANSYS Electronics Desktop, go to File, Import, IPC 2581. Select the XML file. Press Open. The Import dialog appears. We'll import data for all of the nets. The design appears in HFSS 3D layout. We need to prepare the design in 3D layout before linking to IcePack. Create an EM simulation setup as shown here. Note that adding the HFSS solution setup is optional. If you're doing a quick thermal simulation without the ohmic losses in the metal, you can skip this step. Open the Edit Layers dialog in HFSS 3D layout to review the stackup information. We'll compare this data with the layer stackup of the translated design. This is the View 2581 freeware application for viewing IPC 2581 data files. I've opened the IPC 2581 XML file exported from Cadence in this application. This dialog in View 2581 displays the metal and solder mask layers. Compare the two stackups. You can see there are eight metal layers in both HFSS 3D layout and the exported IPC 2581 file from the printed circuit board. Solder mask layers are also present in both the tools. The silkscreen layers are not important for electrical analysis, so HFSS 3D layout has ignored them. The dielectric layers are not displayed in view 2581, but they are present in the XML file exported from the Cadence SPB environment. You can see that all of the original metal and dielectric layers and their materials are present in 3D layout. Now select Edit from the drop-down menu to open the Select Definition window. With copper selected, press the View Edit Material button. Select All Properties. Set Physics to Thermal. Notice that the thermal properties of the copper material imported from Cadence are not defined. The thermal properties are all zero because they weren't defined in the Cadence tool to begin with. This is also true for the FR4 and conformal coat materials. Fortunately, the ANSYS Electronics desktop has built-in libraries with thermal properties for many commonly used materials, so you just need to update the material definitions now. For a material like conformal coat doesn't appear in the system library, thermal properties can be defined here. For instance, I've specified these values for conformal coat's thermal properties. Make sure the electromagnetic and thermal physics types are active and selected. Press Apply and Close. You can easily add thermal properties for the remaining materials using the system library. Bring up the Update Definitions window from the desktop ribbon. Click on Show All Items. Only materials that ANSYS can map to its own library will appear in this dialog. These are Copper, FR4, and Air. 
Conformal coat doesn't appear here since it's not present in the ANSYS material library. We're not worried about that since we just updated its thermal properties. Some other commonly used materials for thermal modeling also appear in the list, but we can ignore them. Select CIS materials for each item. Select all materials and press update. This command updates the thermal properties of the materials in this project using the system library. Now insert an ice pack design into your project. Right-click 3D Components, Create PCB. Enter your company name and model number. Press Setup Link. Either use EDB Layout Data as the source solution or the Solve Setup Defined in 3D Layout. Select these options and press OK. You can specify the total power dissipated or use EM power loss from a linked source. In the next dialog, you can view the metal fraction on the various layers of the printed circuit board. Select the desired layer, for example, say the top layer in this case, and press Display to see the metalization. Similarly, you can get a preview of the metal fraction on other layers, such as the inner layer, as shown here. And this is the metal fraction on the bottom layer. In all of these images, the white areas correspond to metal, while the remaining areas in black are non-metals. Click Finish to generate the PCB object. Now go to the Desktop tab. Select Materials from Edit Definitions. As you can see, copper's thermal properties are updated, and they're identical to the ones in the system library. Conformal coat also has its thermal properties that we defined earlier. From the model tree, select the PCB object. This displays the details of the PCB in the Properties window. Go to the Visualization tab. Starting from the bottom layer, let's make each of the metal layers visible on the board. As we enable visibility for the different metal layers, we can clearly see that the traces in all the layers are present in Ice Pack. Finally, enable the top layer. At this point, you can define the thermal boundary conditions and create an analysis setup to perform thermal simulations. This concludes this video. Thanks for watching.